Hey everyone, welcome back to Game Dev XR. I'm Jonathan. It's just another quick video I thought I'd do, which is showing you how I set up 4.25 to work with my Oculus Quest. I've already put some videos up showing the installation process for 4.25 from source and how to set up the NDK and SDK environments. So this one's just going to be showing you the settings that I use to put a project onto the Oculus Quest and how you can build to it. So when setting up a project, the first thing I do is change these settings here. So I use blueprints. I then change to scalable 3D or 2D. If you're working with desktop, you could stick with desktop VR. You could stick with maximum quality. But if you are, I'd still recommend changing to scalable 3D or 2D. That way you've just got a bit more control in the engine. And I'll show you where you can enable some of them settings once we're in there. Ray tracing disabled. Um, for desktop console, you can obviously switch between. But the best part is if you work with mobile, you can still build your VR project to desktop VR. So I'd still recommend using mobile or tablet. I'm just going to hit no, no star content and I'm going to set up a new folder. So uh, quest build. That should be fine. So I've already covered some of this content before in previous tutorials, but I just thought I'd do a refresh since some of the project settings have changed in 4.25. So first thing I'm going to do, same as normal, I'm going to go to my virtual reality blueprint, maps, and then select motion controller. I'm going to make sure we're in here because this is the one that we're going to build to the headset. The next thing we need to do is go to edit, project settings, and then there's some settings that we need to change in here. So the first thing I normally do is go to packaging. I usually just work from top to bottom. And you can see in here, we haven't got much options, but what we do have is if we go to the drop down arrow here, we've got all of these. So all I normally do is cook only maps. Basically this says that I choose which level to be built into the project. So in this, in this environment, it actually has three different levels. We don't need the HMD and we don't need the startup. So we can ignore them and there's no point taking up space to build it. So all I do here is go to cook only maps and then we can actually specify. So list of maps to include in a package build. I'm going to hit the plus and then we need to find it in our folder setup. So we know it's in virtual reality blueprints, maps, and we know it's our motion controller. You want to choose the U map not the U asset, since our U map is our actual map. We don't have anything else. Oh, so yes, I'm going to do exclude editor content when cooking. So this will ignore basically anything to do with the editor that's not part of our engine or part of our game, let's say. So we've got that. Then if we scroll down, we should be fine. Just double check to make sure I haven't missed anything. We're good. Supported platforms. If you're working on desktop VR, you don't need to do this. The first part's pretty useful though, but since I'm working with the Oculus Quest, we do need to enable Android as our platform. So once that's done, don't have to do anything here. And the, the next thing I want to do is actually look for rendering. So this is a big thing. The best part with 4.25 is I find the MSA, MSA actually works pretty well now. There were some issues with it previously. So you just put it up to eight times, you'll see a difference. Obviously, if this is too performance heavy, just reduce this down as needed. I'm also going to use legacy legacy shading model. So I'm going to enable that. We will need to do a restart. Software occlusion culling. This means the Oculus will decide what to occlude within the scene. If you're having issues where you look around and stuff starts popping in and out, it's mainly because of this as the origin point which chances are behind the camera. So if that's something you're having issues with, maybe disable this later on, but I'm going to enable it. Not going to worry about materials. Just going to keep scrolling down. If you are doing stuff with reflective surfaces and you need more performance, you can actually drop this down to a different resolution, Let's say half. So 64. And what we need to do is enable forward shading. Excellent. 
So this is just all performance stuff that I find helps a lot when developing for the quest. The next is allow static lighting. No, we're okay. Should be fine. You can use these, I believe, but I never really touch them. Don't really see much of a difference. Let's scroll down. Translucency, post-processing. So when we select a desktop or mobile, this is mainly what it disabled. So it disabled a lot of these. So we don't have Bloom, Ambient Occlusion, are all disabled on mobile devices, which is really good for the Quest. But if you do want these, you can go in and change them around. For an aliasing method, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select MSAA. This needs forward rendering and it works better. So we've already enabled forward shading, sorry. So we're going to use that. Then in optimizations, didn't find much in this one, but this is something I wanted to bring up is mobile HDR. So when building to the quest, I find Vulcan is the best to use. We haven't got to that setting yet, but this is something that you consider. You can keep mobile HDR enabled, but if you build with Vulcan with ARM64, I believe it is, you'll get flickering on the right eye. You can disable this just to help with that. And again, we're going to enable multi-view, multi so mobile multi-view, just a performance optimization and run Robin occlusion as well. Can't hurt. So these sort of stuff we don't really need. And I believe that's it for our rendering settings. Then we're going to keep going down. If you're brand new to Unreal, just make sure you've got your SDKs set up. Otherwise this won't work at all. And what we're going to do now is once we're in Android under platforms is hit configure now. Don't need to accept license. I've already done it. Don't need to restart yet. I'm going to ignore it. For the minimum SDK version and target SDK version, I actually find setting these to 25 works best. I do think you can go higher with these. I was experimenting with it earlier and it works pretty well. But for now, 25 and 25 is pretty good. I'm going to then do package game data inside of APK. From here, we're going to go keep scrolling. And this is what I was saying about Vulkan. So at the minute, we've got OpenGL enabled, but Vulkan is supported in 4.25. It wasn't 4.24, but it was a little bit unstable with certain settings. And it still, still is with mobile HDR. So I'm going to select support Vulkan. I'm going to disable support OpenGL. And we're also going to set support ARM64 and disable ARM7. So to build to the quest, if we build a project now, it won't work because we actually have it set. So the Oculus reads or asks for a distribution APK. What we can do is actually hit the tick on that. So we remove it and then we just need to hit this plus and make sure we're on Oculus, Oculus Quest. Excellent thing. That's all that. Android SDK is good. Then if we keep scrolling down to plugins, we'll find the Oculus VR plugin here. And you see we've got some more settings that we can use. So I actually enabled most of these on a previous build and it worked pretty well. So I'm going to do is do the same thing here. Before that, jumping ahead, the launch Oculus performance window. If you skipped everything that I've done so far, you can actually open this window, go to mobile, and it will allow you to change the settings here instead to optimize for the quest. But I do find there's some issues with this or they used to be. So be careful when using this, but I'd recommend just going through and using the settings that I've shown. So what we're going to do now is general color space. We'll just set this to quest and then we'll hit enable specific color gam gamut. We don't really need to worry about PC. You could put high quality distortion if you're using desktop because I developed with the Oculus Rift and then built to the quest. I'm going to use that. And from here, we've got FFR, which is full variated, full variated rendering. I can't say it properly. So 
we're going to set that to dynamic. So it basically means the headset will decide when the best time to use specific levels are. But for standard projects, essentially, you can get away with just using low. They'll just give you a little bit more performance back and resolution. Then I'm going to use chroma correction. Focus aware. I don't think this works yet. Yes, it does. So, yeah. So we're going to use focus aware. We're going to keep recenter. And you can see here we've actually got hand tracking support now. So you can choose between both controllers and hands. I haven't tried this yet, so I'm not too sure on the correct setup. But once I have, I'll do a video showing how to use this. And last of all, we're going to set late latching. This just means it'll actually be able to track the controllers. It'll track the controllers easier. And it actually uses multi-view and Vulkan, which we have already already enabled earlier on to do so. So now all we need to do is actually restart our editor. That's it. So it didn't take too long to do. You can see it's loaded the wrong map because I actually missed changing our settings. So editor, project settings again, maps and modes. And I'm just going to make sure these are motion controller map. So all good. So now what I can do is actually go to my launch button, project launcher, uh, advanced, buy the book or data build and set this to buy the book. If you keep this on, on the fly, it'll take considerably longer to build each time. Just something to note, the first build you do will always take longer because it compiles the shaders. Whereas once you build it once, it only updates the new changes you've made within the editor. So you don't have to worry about it. So keep it on by the book and then we can hit launch. But what I want to do is before I do that on my headset. So say if you're using the Oculus Quest and you have a live link cable set up and you have it enabled, you want to make sure you have the Oculus software installed on your desktop. That way you can actually hit the drop down and say VR preview. I have my quest plugged in now. I don't know if it's going to work though. No. So if you've got your quest plugged in, make sure that's plugged in before you open Unreal. And then you should be able to actually demo your project without having to build it. But I find it better to build to the quest anyway. It's just, it's pretty quick. It doesn't take too long and you're going to see more issues if there are any. So, on the drop down, project launcher, buy the book, and then we're just going to hit launch. Excellent. So I successfully built the headset. Oh, I successfully built to the headset. I'm not going to show you it in the headset because it's just me teleporting around. It says we've got some errors, but if I'm correct, it's going to be about game mode. Not really sure what this is about, but hopefully you guys don't get that. This might just be on my headset. The fact that I was a bit impatient to start it. So it's built. It's fully up and running. Ignore these errors. <laughs> hopefully this helps. No, it's not exactly the, the most perfect tutorial, but it shows you that it does work and how it's on there. If you enjoyed this video, and it was useful to you, or you think it might be useful to somebody else, feel free to share it. It helps out quite a bit. Also, if you want to hang out and talk to other devs, then we've got a Discord. I've got a link in the description for that, so feel free to head on over there. And yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, and until next time, stay safe, and I'll see you then. Bye!